Are you ready to discover the answer to the most important questions for your retirement? How much retirement income is enough? This is a critical question for anyone looking to plan for their future. The answer depends on the kind of lifestyle you want to live in retirement. Do you want to maintain your current lifestyle? Or do you want to travel the world and enjoy the freedom that retirement really can provide? We'll dive into the retirement numbers suggested by financial planners like Fidelity, but it won't stop there. I'll also share my personal thoughts on retirement income and I'll reveal how I was able to retire early. Plus, I'll give you a few ideas that you might want to consider to potentially increase your returns before and during retirement. So grab a pen and paper because you won't want to miss this video. Please know that this video is just my personal opinion and I'm not a licensed financial planner. I'm just someone who is able to retire early because of the things I've learned and the types of income that I use to fund my retirement. First, how much do you need to retire? Companies such as Fidelity suggest that by the time you're at the typical retirement age of 67, you should have saved up 10 times your annual income. For example, to achieve that 10x mark by 67 years of age, Fidelity is saying that by 30 years of age, you should have one time your annual income, or if you're making $75,000 a year, you should have saved up $75,000 by the time you're 30. By the time you're 35, you should have saved up two times your yearly income, which if you're still making $75,000, would equate to $150,000 saved up for your retirement. And finally, if your yearly income is $75,000 by age 67, they say that you should have saved up $750,000 for retirement. So the financial planners say that your goal should be 10X your annual income right before retirement. However, there are many factors and variables that you should consider besides that blanket 10X suggestion by the time that you retire. For example, what kind of lifestyle do you want to live during retirement? If you want to travel a lot more than you did before retirement, you might need a lot more income than that 10X portfolio. On the other hand, in retirement, several expenses most likely will go away. For example, maybe by the time you retire, you'll have paid off your mortgage. Or once you decide to retire, since you no longer need to fund that retirement, that expense will be gone. Also, if you had kids at home before you retired, well, they will most likely have moved out. So you'll no longer have to pay for their expenses. However, there are some other expenses such as medical costs that may increase as you get older. Another factor to consider is the difference between lower income retirees and higher income retirees. For example, a lower earner would need a higher percentage of their pre-retirement income to live on as compared to a higher earner. The reason is that the higher earner will most likely have been saving a larger amount of their income before retirement. And since they will no longer have to fund that retirement portfolio, that expense will no longer be there. Because of their higher income, they will most likely also have been paying a higher percentage of income towards taxes. So they will no longer be saving for retirement and they'll be paying less income taxes due to earning less. So as a result, the higher earner will need to replace a lesser percentage. For example, they'll only need to replace say 50% of their income, whereas the lower earner might need to replace a higher percentage of their pre-retirement income, say for example 80%. The lower earner was paying less in taxes and saving less for retirement, so they were spending a higher percentage of their income before and after retirement on necessities as compared to the higher earner's percentage spent towards necessities. As a result, the lower earner will need to replace a higher percentage of their income as compared to the higher earner. So how do retirees fund their retirement? Well, Social Security currently funds part of people's retirement. As you can see in the illustration, Social Security funds a higher percentage of the lower income earner's retirement as compared to the higher earners. That means that higher earners will need to save a higher percentage of their retirement income compared to lower earners because Social Security makes up less of their potential retirement income. Personally, when I was planning for my retirement, I didn't want to take a pay cut or lower my standards of living after retirement. Instead, I wanted to improve my quality of life by traveling more. One of the most popular retirement rules is known as the 80% rule. It suggests that you will need 80% of your pre-retirement income after retirement. However, I was more interested in having 100% of my pre-retirement income or even increasing my income after retirement above that 100% mark. And to achieve this, I invested in real estate, dividend paying stocks, and I did option trading. However, I'll be honest with you. If you're getting close to retirement, unless you're really needing to build a retirement portfolio, I will most likely not suggest becoming a new real estate investor. Dealing with tenants can be a hassle, even with a great property manager. Instead, I recommend focusing on dividend paying stocks, ETFs, and option trading. Last year, I pocketed a net of $187,000 from option trading and over $11,000 in dividends, and we earned over $2,800 in interest from the cash sitting in our option trading account. In total, dividends and option trading alone put over $200,000 into my pocket. Now that account had about $600,000 in it, and I set aside around a million dollars to cover all my positions last year. But what's even better is that in spite of the S&P 500 and NASDAQ experiencing significant declines last year, 
my account only fell 4%. Additionally, my max drawdown, which is the largest amount that my account was down last year, it was only 17% compared to the S&P 500's max drawdown of 24%, and NASDAQ of 34%. Investing in dividend paying stocks, high dividend ETFs, and even more so my favorite retirement income tool, trading in options, is one way that you can really stretch out your retirement dollars. If you'd like to receive alert as soon as I buy dividend stocks or sell options for monthly income, check out the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. To see the fastest way I know of how to retire off a portfolio of stock and options, check out the video at the link above and in the description below entitled, The Fastest Possible Way to Live Off Dividends. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.